uh, hello friends today in this tutorial I will be showing you that how basically we can upload delete read all files from Amazon S3 storage inside Node.js and Express and for this we will be using the Malter library so basically you can see that we have this interface out there and uh, we have a interface out there where we can select files and directly upload these files to our bucket Amazon S3 storage bucket so this is basically the bucket guys we have created inside Amazon S3 and there are no files uh, there you will see that there are no pr uh, files present here I will now be going to my application inside Node.js Express I will choose a file so inside Amazon S3 bucket guys as you all know you can directly upload any file it can be image video zip file any sort of file so this supports multiple files so guys so we can select here multiple four images at one time if I select these four files click on upload so it will take some time guys and it will directly upload these files and it will show you in the tabular structure these are the four files which are uploaded screenshot 1 png 2 png that's all and we have for uh, these uh, uh, this uh, this is a direct URL here where we can directly go to it so basically access is deni denied if you directly go to it and now we have download buttons as well basically if you click download button your image will be downloaded so now you will be able to see the image which you have uploaded right here and we also have a delete button as well guys so if you hit this button this will be deleted from the Amazon S3 storage so if I just refresh it you will now see all the four images that we uploaded right here is directly uploaded you will see in the Amazon S3 storage bucket right here you will see the extension of the type last modifies the size storage class all that stuff and uh, you will see that guys we are basically storing it uh, listing out all the files which are there inside Amazon bucket and now we also have this delete button guys if I press the delete button are you sure you want to delete the this file click on ok so now guys this this file will be deleted as you can see the file is deleted so once again you can see that only two files are remaining right here so this is also proofs so if I refresh here you will now see there are only two files available so we are performing all the operations guys we are reading all the files we are deleting the files we are downloading the files as well which we uploaded right here and we can even directly upload files as well so this is a all in one application that I will be showing you in Node.js and express how to do this process and to CRUD application it's basically it's list out on the files download the file delete the file and also it lists out all the file from the Amazon S3 storage bucket so this is basically the application you are not uh, you can even upload any sort of extension file guys you can even upload a audio file as well you can see it's an audio file if I click upload file a audio file will also get uploaded so just give some time to it it is saying that you will see that the file is uploaded because uh, it was larger in size the file was larger that's why it took some time you can see the file is su successfully uploaded you can now download this audio file right here you can now see if I click the download button the download process must start here so you will see the file is downloaded so now we have three files guys so the third one is the audio file you will see that AMR this is an audio file so you can even directly select this and delete it from here inside our dashboard also you simply need to write here permanent delete you can even perform this request from the AWS dashboard as well but we will be looking at how to do this inside Node.js and Express so let's start the application guys we will be showing you from scratch how to do this process so let's start the process so now guys the very first thing in this process is to basically create some uh, bucket where we can upload the files and also we need to create a user as well so first of all guys just go to your Amazon dashboard and in the services tab just select here S3 just search for S3 and inside this go to this S3 it's a scalable storage for Amazon S3 where we can store and retrieve any amount of data from anywhere so there is an option here called as create bu bucket click this option and now you need to give your bucket a unique name so here I will give this bucket coding siksha this is my bucket and by default the region will be selected here of your own location so wherever you are you don't need to modify these settings so simply click on the create bucket option and your bucket will be created right here 
so now guys we can directly upload files to this bucket by selecting here upload option and it have add files option here and basically we can go to it directly upload a image file like this and click on upload you can see that it is directly uploaded this you can see succeed it so this is the file which gets uploaded we can even perform all these operations we can delete as well simply we just need to write here permanently delete so you can perform all these actions in the uh, dashboard also but we will be looking at how to do this programmatically now as you created this uh, bucket guys now you need to create go to user simply type search user and here you need to create a user guys so simply go to user and here we need to click on add user we need to create a root user you can give any name of your choice but i will be giving at by default username is root click on next and after this guys you just need to click on next again and uh, then again click on create user so now your user is created guys so after this you need to go to this user and here you need to basically add the permissions so the permission guys basically click on add permission and uh, we will attach the uh, policies directly so select these third option and here we need to select for the permission guys which is s3 full access this is basically the permission guys as uh, we need to select here because we are working with s3 storage bucket engine you need to click on this option and select this permission that's all we need to select this permission guys and click on next so we need to click this option add permission simply add this permission and now guys your permission has been attached you have have this permission so this you can uh, create or upload files you can download files you can delete files all those permissions have been granted now guys we need to create a access access key here so how we can do that we need to go to security credentials and then we need to create this access key this is really important guys access key and here we need to select the second option here which is local mode and then just select this option i understand and click on next and then click on create access key so this will give you your own access key guys this is really important you need to store this information in a very uh, i let me store it inside my notepad file so uh, i will need this information access key and all this stuff so simply copy this access key and uh, your secret key as well so this is your secret access key so this will be only be shown for this first time so you better uh, store it somewhere else because you will need this secret key as well and now i will delete all this information once i finish this video so don't copy my information click on done and now your access key has been created that's all so this is the setup process guys that you need to do for this amazon s3 storage crud application so now we can start our node.js express or any sort of application that we are building so so now to get started guys we will basically go to our directory and here we will create a new directory which will be aws crud and we will go into the directory and uh, the very first thing guys we will do uh, here we will initialize the package.json file so npm init dash y this will create with default options and now we need to install the dependencies which are available for this project express will be the web server and we also need the aws sdk aws sdk this is the dependency and also we are using malter so these are the three dependencies which we will need for this project so simply install this by this npm command express aws sdk and malter so now we have installed this so we can start our express server guys so we can simply right here so at the very top guys we can simply say express and we need to require this express dependency and also we need to require the malter dependency guys and also aws so this we will require the aws sdk and then we will inst instantiate a new express app and then here guys we will make the public directory as static this is not necessary 
this is just for basically storing our static assets so here inside your root directory you can basically make a public folder and uh, if you want the full source code guys of this application crud application that we built right here the link is given in the description of the video basically if you want to purchase the full source code you can go to the description and you can directly purchase the full source code and after that you will get the, the full source code in a directly like this a zip file will get downloaded automatically whenever you make the payment while going to stripe.com you will get this directory structure which will get which will hold all this source code as well so i will also type the full source code in this video so don't worry about it so now let's get started so we just need to make this public folder right here in the root directory here so here we will store our index.html file that's all so so here we need to first of all configure the access key and the secret key by using aws sdk config update so here we need to pass three options here the first option is uh, access key id and the second one is the secret key secret access key and the third option is the region so whatever region that you selected so these three information will be coming from your own aws dashboard so i just uh, stored this information so this is the access key let me copy this and paste it this is the secret key that is we obtained here simply copy this paste it and the reason uh, basically of whenever you created your bucket just go to your dashboard so so once you go to your s3 bucket the region will be listed here let me go to the bucket and show to you so the reason is this one this is a reason us east one this is the reason here simply copy this so after you do this process guys we just need to write here include the storage engine which is malter memory storage we will use the memory storage here and then we will say we will pass the storage to the malter constructor that's all and here we will say app.get so whenever someone goes to the home page we will basically show this uh, file which is uh, index.html that's all so now we just need to start this server on a port number which is 5000 So we can now start this server guys by simply saying node bone index.js so it will start this application here. So app is listening on port 5000 so if you now go to this So nothing will be there guys we haven't written the html code right here and right here just uh, inside your html we do need to include the bootstrap cdn guys so we will use some bootstrap widgets out there for that we will include the cdn for bootstrap and after this guys basically we will have a container class of bootstrap and then we will have a heading in the center position and here you will say Amazon S3 storage crud web app in Node.js express so here guys we will have a form which allows you to upload files to Amazon S3 storage we will make this post request method will be post and encoding type will be multi-part form data so inside this guys we will have form group class of bootstrap input form control which again it's a bootstrap class 
input type file and we will be giving a name attribute of files and allows to multiple so this allows to upload multiple files here guys so this is required attribute and then we will have a simple button to submit the form we will simply say upload files that's all so if you now refresh guys you will now see this interface right here and uh, if you don't do this you will say please select one or more files so this is our interface and uh, right here we now need to basically write the javascript code guys somewhat we will use the concept of ajax so uh, here guys whenever for this this will be very simple we need to simply have this upload route so just go to your index.js file and here we need to write a post request guys for uploading the files so we will say app.post slash upload and we will say upload dot array because we have put this upload we are using the array method here in order to upload multiple files and files this is a name attribute that we have given right here files and then we are passing it as a middleware so we can say that request response a callback function and here we will compare if no files have been selected or the length of the files in the request is equal to zero in either of these cases the file hasn't been selected so in that case we will return a 404-400 status code that no files were uploaded so this is not mandatory but still if javascript is disabled then it's uh, nice to basically have this validation in server side so then we will basically instantiate the aws s3 like this and then we will use promises guys upload promises and here we will say request files dot map because this is an array of files guys if a user has selected uh, multiple files so we will use the map method for each file we will upload the file like this the upload parameters will be upload params will be an object which will contain the bucket name the bucket name will be the simply the bucket name that you selected guys so we can simply create a constant here right here at the top we can say const bucket name so here my bucket name is coding siksha so we will provide the bucket name right here and then the key which will be file dot original name key uh, k will be capital here and lastly will be the body guys so file dot buffer that's all this is the actual content of the file that's all so these are the upload pa params and here we will simply return s3 dot upload it contains the upload method guys and uh, we will upload it with these upload parameters and return a promise that's all and when all the promises are completed guys promise all upload params we will then return again a promise data and here we will say data for each we will use the for each loop the this will contain the result of the upload and here we will basically console log a message on the console that uh, file uploaded successfully that's all so now basically uh, if i uh, select some files let's suppose if i select these two files click upload it is saying upload params is not defined let me just see guys what is the problem upload params is not defined oh sorry okay this needs to be upload promises guys sorry here we need to pass these promises upload promises that's all this is all that you need to do and uh, just again do this process just choose these two files click upload so now check the console guys
so now you can see missing credentials in configuration if using aws config file set is aws sdk load config to 1 missing credentials in config just wait guys let me see what is the problem here uh, okay guys i figured out the error this was a really silly silly mistake from me it is just a typo mistake so if you know uh, go to your aws config update line the second line here secret access keys i put here s here so it needs to be secret access key right here so just make this modification right here guys and now your code is correct so it was just a typo mistake and now if i basically refresh my application localhost 5000 click on choose file and basically guys if i choose to choose these two files click on upload you will now see basically file uploaded successfully file uploaded successfully and now if i check my uh, bucket now this bucket will contain these two files you just need to refresh so now you can see that guys the file has been uploaded so now we need to display these two files guys which are uploaded right here in a tabular structure so whenever we open the home page we need, do need to basically show these files in a tabular like structure so how we can do that it's very simple we will basically make a request which will be app.get uh, slash files basically it will get all the files from the amazon s3 bucket this will be a simple get request slash files so now to do this process guys it's very simple we will put the bucket name for first of all we will instantiate s3 new aws s3 and then we will simply say the list parameters which will be the bucket name here so here you will replace the bucket name that we have our coding section we need to get all the files which are present inside this bucket so we aws sdk basically provide a opt method which is list objects version 2 we will basically use this method and here we will uh, use list params we will pass it and this returns a callback function holding all the files which are present inside this bucket so what we will do guys we will compare if any sort of error take place in that case we simply need to show a error message on the screen that uh, error fetching files and then we will simply return a error message that uh, internal server error if no error take place guys then we will simply return all these files we will say data dot content dot map this will be a array so we will loop through by using the map method and right here guys what we will do right here we will have the name of the file which will be file dot key and the url of the file which will be a dynamic url so here you need to replace your bucket name guys so my bucket name is coding siksha so i can replace the bucket name like this also bucket name s3 dot amazon aws dot com slash this will be the file key that's all and the third that's all these will be the two properties guys that we will need for this okay we need do need to put this parentheses right here so now we have this and now we will return this as a json response that's all so this is our request guys slash files so now if i go to this request slash files this will return me this json response to me you will now see this will be an array of files which are present inside our my amazon aw3 storage bucket now there are two files if i now upload a third file by going to the amazon dashboard let's suppose i need to add a file here the third file 
click on upload so this third file is also is uploaded right here so now if you see the bucket now you will see there are three files if I basically refresh it now this will return three files you can see that so now we need to use some Ajax guys asynchronous JavaScript and XML inside our HTML here so right here whenever we load the page we do need to call this get request slash files and one more thing guys we do need to basically whenever we upload files right here at the we can redirect the user back to the home page that's all so whenever we go to the home page this file will get called and right here inside our javascript code guys basically we need to call this function so yeah for this guys uh, we do need to have jquery as well alongside with bootstrap because we will be making use of uh, jquery as well simply include the cdn right here so after including the cdn we will basically uh, include the custom javascript code so we will write this inside a separate file so just make a script.js file guys and right here guys basically we will have document.ready method of jquery so right here guys we will call a method which will fetch files so whenever your web page is loaded this method will automatically gets called fetch files so let me have a alert message hi so if you now refresh your uh, page if you go to local is 5000 you will see high messages printed out so now we simply need to basically inside this method guys we need to make a ajax request and inside this we will put the url which will be slash files and the method here will be a get method and the success callback it will return a data and uh, here we need to basically have a tabular structure guys inside our index.html just after the form we will have a table of all files uh, we will display this table in the center position table table and table striped so these are bootstrap classes so name of the file uh, url of the file and uh, the action so these are three column skies and uh, right here you will give it an id here file table body so here we will be dynamically be putting the number of files here guys and now inside we will target first of all we will basically clear out the previous stuff we will target it by the id that we have given file table body we will use the empty method and then we will basically construct a row so this is slightly complicated code guys the link is given in the description you can copy paste all the source code basically uh, this is this is actual row we are talking about I will simply don't waste the time here and simply copy paste so this is actually hold the first of all the name of the file file dot name so for this uh, we will be using it's a array of objects so for this what we need to do here is that uh, just wait data yes data just wait guys I am just doing that process yeah so as you all see guys basically it's an array of objects so for 
for this we need to run a for each loop for this you will see we are using the for each loop this is basically an array of objects we need to loop through each object and for each object we are showing the properties the file name we are file url and actually the download button we are having this download button here and the actual delete button as well and then lastly we are appending this row as a row here we are using the append method right here that's all so if you just refresh this application now you will now see these three files being having there we have the name of the file we have the url of the file you can directly open this direct x is not allowed so that's why if you click the download button nothing will happen because we haven't written these requests right here so now we do need to write these download button and delete button so for this we will need to invoke these methods attach download handlers and attach delete handlers and also guys we will have an error callback as well so if any sort of error take place in that case we will console log a error message that uh, error fetching files so after this guys we will basically uh, define the methods that we declared attach delete handlers this is really simple function attach delete handlers attach download handlers so these are the two methods and inside this method guys we will basically have a class which is delete button we have given this class to all the delete buttons so we are binding a on click listener to it to all those delete buttons so when whenever you click those delete buttons you will basically get the actual file name by this data attribute we have given the data attribute as well name so here we will be comparing a confirm pop up are you confirm are you sure you want to delete the file so there will be this pop up message which will be there and actual file name we will basically having the file name which is so this will ask this question and depending upon your answer if you select yes or no if you select yes in that case we will invoke a method which will delete file we will pass the file name directly and this function guys basically will delete the file from the sw3 amazon s3 storage bucket we will attach the file name and inside this we will make use of ajax once again this time the url will be slash files slash followed by your file name method here will be delete and here we will have the success callback function again we will uh, call fetch files once again in order to refresh the list inside the table once the file is deleted so again we will have error callback as well we will say error deleting file so now we need to make this delete request guys so go to your index.js and this is really simple we will add this delete request app dot delete slash file slash this will be a dynamic parameter request response and file name so s3 new aws s3 and we will construct the delete parameters this will actually again hold our bucket name and uh, then we will have our key parameter so this will be request dot params dot name that's all this is the name here 
so then we will call the delete object method guys inside aws sdk we will pass the delete params so now basically we will simply return a response back that file deleted successfully if any sort of error take place in that case we can return a response which is error response internal server error that's all and if i now click this button guys delete button and uh, are you sure you want to delete click on ok so now guys you will see that file will be deleted so what happened let me refresh now you can see only two files have been remaining if i click this file also only one file will be there i think some mistake is happening because whenever i clicking the ok button we are once again uh, calling that fetch files me method here let me check here what is the problem okay let me check our script.js file in the success callback you will see we are calling the fetch files method in the fetch files method we are okay that's the problem guys you will see we are uh, this is again a typo mistake file table body that's all it it was not uh, uh, deleting the previous entries that's why so now if you check guys basically there is one file if i try to upload a second file click on upload this will upload the file there will be two files if i click delete here there will be one file you will see that so now we have the to implement the download functionality if i click the download button it should download the file so it's very easy uh, we need to write this function here which is attach download handlers similarly we have att attached a download button class to all the download buttons so we will attach a callback function here e dot prevent default download url will be dollar this attribute href and here we will invoke a method download file we will create this method we will pass the download url that's all need to write this function guys which is download url this download url will be there so this is really easy guys so basically the link will be there document dot create element link dot href uh, url link dot set attribute this is very simple code guys so i will not waste time in writing this so this will automatically uh, you can see that it will create a anchor tag automatically clicks on that anchor tag and gets deleted that's all and here if you see basically whenever we are attaching this download button we are basically uh, right here if you see we are again having a get request we need to write inside our index.js file to download the actual file from the sw3 storage engine this is the request so we can say app dot get slash files slash name slash download so here guys we will again be having new aws s3 download params the bucket name will be bucket name and uh, the key will be request dot params dot name 
this time we have a function guys which is get object we will download params so right here basically we will uh, call this response dot attachment request dot params dot name and then we will send out this response send data dot body that's all and this will actually download the file as an attachment if any sort of error take place we can show internal error that's all this completes the application and uh, if you refresh click on download your file will be gets downloaded guys if you press this button let me check Let me just refresh this application once again. Uh, let me check guys, it is saying download file is not defined. Uh, let me check guys, what is the problem? Download file. Okay, okay, sorry guys, sorry. This is download file. click on download your file will be it is saying document is not defined again a typo mistake guys so sometimes while coding your mistakes will get if you upload a file click on upload file your file will upload it click upload file two files will be there click on download you can see that the file is downloaded and now you can see your file which gets downloaded there is delete button as well if you click delete your file gets deleted so now there is only one file available so if you refresh your amazon s3 storage bucket only one file is there so this is our crud application guys we developed in node.js express using the aws sdk so hopefully you will like this video the full source code is given in the description of the video you can purchase purchase the full source code you will get this directory structure and uh, thank you very much for watching this video and i will be seeing you in the next video